Hi guys, Lee Ashby here from Lash E-Bikes in Bendigo and I thought I'd just do a quick video on a battery I recently made. Um, now I've got a picture of the bike here that I think it's from. It's a um, Aprilia Enjoy. So you can see a few pictures here. So it's not a bad looking little bike. Not sure if that one's it, but you can see the battery sort of sits in the top here. Um, so I think the model's uh, something like this. Haven't really been able to find many good pictures, but um, you can sort of see that the battery sits here uh, in a case. Uh, so the battery that I made for it was this six parallel uh, version um, at 13 series. So this gives us over 20 amp hours um, using the Sanyo GA18650 cell. Um, so we can see here, gone with this formation, um, I've been able to fit three cells wide, basically, in this sort of staggered uh, format. So at this stage, I've got the nickel strip uh, cut out and spot welded on the ends of the cells, um, just in their parallel groups at this stage. Um, and it's a pretty tight fit um, as you get to the end here, but there is enough room at the end there for the um, cables and little connectors. And you can see there, I've got the, um, the BMS up on its side um, and the last three cells um, together in, in that group there, sort of side by side. And that just gives us enough room to put the BMS in and these extra wires. Uh, so there's just a picture of my setup. You can sort of see the battery there on a bit of a different angle. This is my little spot welder here on top of my 12 volt uh, deep cycle battery. This is my little wooden welding jig that's served me well to um, hold the cells together as I hot glue them into place. Yeah, you might be able to get a bit, a bit better of a view there of the BMS at the end. So it's quite a tight fit. Um, and with this black plastic case that the cells sit in, you actually have to grind off um, some of the plastic ribs uh, that are on the case to, to make it fit. I'll show you that in a minute. Here's just putting on, it's not the best picture. This one this is just off, off my phone, but um, just soldering the um, series pieces in, just using a bit of green tape to help prevent any shorts as I'm sliding on the new bits of nickel. Yeah, they're probably not in chronological order. But this is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, here in the casing, you can see how I've uh, grinded off some of these little ribs. So there was a couple of millimeters of plastic um, sticking up um, on about oh, probably eight or 10 of these ribs. So using a little renovator tool and a file, I was able to file them down and that helps the battery uh, sit in there and um, yeah in this case every millimeter is required you can also see there I've got the um, XT90 uh, plugs in with these uh, positive and negative terminals terminals here at the end and um, just got the BMS temporary wide on here as I'm uh, stuck on as I'm putting all those uh, leads on and I just use hot glue to basically give the, the pack all the, the rigidity that it needs. And some of the um, BMS wires at the end had to have a little bit of an extension uh, on them because this was such a long pack. Um, so certainly handling this pack had to sort of have a, it was good to have a bit of a platform underneath it to help handle it uh, in and out of the black plastic um, box. Uh, that way, because I think otherwise if you picked it up from one end it could sort of snap or break the the um, the hot glue in the middle. You can see there's just a bit, bit of a close up of the ribs that have been filed away and the anti-spark connector. And here you can see the flip side of the top piece that comes in. Uh, there's probably still a little bit of work required there for me to um, trim them out 
Um, so basically they all had to be trimmed off uh, completely. Pretty much getting towards the end here now. So you can see here up the end, I've got enough room, just a couple of inches of room to have uh, a bit of room for the wires to, to sit in a bit of a cavity there. I'm just using this filament tape over the top of um, this yellow uh, sort of high temperature tape. Um, so the high temperature tape can sort of protect the cells from uh, any moisture or any accidental shorts and also give it a little bit of protection. Um, and the filament tape in this case is really good because there's, it just gives it that little bit of extra strength and a bit of protection from any rubbing that might occur if the battery's got a slight bit of movement. Um, but I've actually used this thin bit of foam here just to help uh, pat it out that last little millimetre that it needed on the, on the ends. And basically just ran the BMS wires along the top. There's a bit of room in the top sort of channel area. There's a bit of, uh, bit of room there and the tightest point was along the sides here on, on either side. Um, but basically just ran them all, all here and um, let the, uh, the surplus sort of just pull up and loop at this top end. And if you want some cheap foam, because I know if you go to buy foam from Clark Rubber or somewhere similar, like a, a special foam or rubber shop, it, it costs you dearly. Um, obviously, gym mats are good for bigger batteries. This is actually some flooring uh, underlay um, called Air Step. So if you're laying down some um, laminate flooring, um, or if you go to a flooring shop, I'm sure you can get some offcuts of their Air Step. Uh, thin foam that goes underneath um, the flooring that's worked out really well uh, for this sort of battery where you want a thin piece of foam. So yeah, just enough room at the end for the, the wires and that to pull in that area. And finishing up here now with the top case on, uh, basically you're left with a, a little one or two millimetre gap um, if you're just sort of resting it on there. Um, but as you can see when you're putting a screw in the bolts it starts to tighten it down a little bit. Um, so I didn't tighten it down all the way. Um, the customer was happy enough to um, talk them up themselves or use some zip ties or some more tape to um, sort of hold off this last little gap. And that's it. So quite a handy battery, um, really uses the space well, as you can see there, it fills up the, the whole space. Uh, I think it weighed just under five kilograms um, when I shipped it out. Um, so this battery gives, uh, let's have a look at the stats here, it's over 20 amp hours um, of storage space in it. And because it's a 48 volt um, battery, by my calculations, that's 979 uh, watt hours. Um, so from my rough calculations and testing in my previous bikes, um, I think with this bike should easily get over 100 k's distance, if not more like 200 k's, 150 to 200 k's of riding distance, um, you know, on, on a flat road, just cruising along. Um, prob probably under 100 if you're pushing it hard. Um, but because this bike is um, sort of meant for, for cruising and, and touring, I think um, 100 k's to 200 k's, uh, depending on your weight and riding style obviously, is, um, is a fair call. Um, so I'm not sure what the original battery uh, was in here, but because these bikes are starting to get on a bit um, just from looking at them, um, you know, they're probably yeah, 5, 8, 10 years old, something like that. Um, yeah, I'm imagining that we've probably doubled the range uh, of this bike. So uh, looking at the bike here again, um, yeah, it looks like a quite a reasonable reasonable bike. So there's no reason why I couldn't get another another five years or more out of this battery. Um, as long as, yeah, keep up the, the maintenance on the bike, I think, you, I think you're good to go. Anyway, I hope that was useful. And if anyone else is building a battery uh, for their Aprilia Enjoy, I think that the model is. Um, this is certainly a good layout using 18650 cells um, to basically get um, the maximum capacity unit. Anyway, cheers.